Diagnosis according to four levels. This time we discuss chi level heat. Chi level heat can arise because there has been a direct invasion of exogenous pathogenic chi in the chi level or because exogenous pathogenic chi has penetrated deeper from the Hue level. Exogenous pathogenic chi can penetrate deeper to the next level if it is strong enough or if the previous level has been treated incorrectly or inadequately. This pattern will develop more rapidly and the symptoms will be stronger in a person who already has an excess heat condition. When there is a chi level disorder, both pathogenic chi and cheng chi are strong. This will result in pronounced excess heat symptoms. Chi level disorders are differentiated according to which organ is affected. There are many subcategories which mainly have relevance when using herbal medicine. The most relevant patterns for acupuncturists are described. The pathogenic heat will itself disturb the qi ji in the interior and the heat will drive yang qi upwards and outwards. This is further reinforced by the extreme heat that arises as a consequence of the struggle between cheng qi and pathogenic qi. This results in the generalized symptoms and signs that are seen in this level. These are very similar to the symptoms and signs that are seen in the Yang Ming stage of the six stages. And these two stages and levels are also overlapping. Xiaoyang stage symptoms can also be differentiated as qi level heat. The generalized symptoms and signs of this level are fever with an aversion to heat, but not to cold. There is no aversion to cold because the pathogenic qi no longer disrupts the functioning of Wei Qi. On the other hand, there is so much heat in the body that the person has an aversion to heat. Heat injures fluids, and this results in a great thirst with a desire for cold drinks. The urine will be dark. There may be profuse sweating due to the heat, but there can also be a lack of sweating because the fluids are exhausted. The extreme heat can ascend to the heart and agitate the shen. This can be seen when the person is restless and irritable. There is a bitter taste in the mouth and a thick dry yellow coating on the tongue. The pulse will be rapid and full. Qi level heat should be further differentiated with regard to which organ is affected. Each organ pattern will manifest with specific symptoms and signs that reflect the disturbance of its functions. Heat can easily injure yin. This will manifest with symptoms and signs of yin deficiency. There can also be simultaneous Wei and Qi level heat with the resultant mixture of symptoms and signs from both levels. Invasions of exogenous heat that have not been expelled from the Wei level or that have been treated incorrectly or inadequately is the etiology of Qi level heat. Direct invasions of heat to the Qi level after being exposed to exogenous pathogenic Qi. Symptoms and signs. There will be high fever with no aversion to cold, profuse sweating or no sweating if the heat has damaged fluids, extreme thirst with a desire for cold drinks, red face, restlessness and irritability. The skin may feel warm to the touch, restless sleep with violent dreams, red tongue with dry yellow coating, rapid full flooding pulse. Key symptoms, high fever with no aversion to cold, profuse sweating and thirst, rapid and flooding pulse. Treatment principle, drain heat. Acupuncture points, choose from LI11 and 214. Needling technique is draining, we bleed 214. LI11 and 214 drain heat from the chi level. The person should avoid consuming food and beverages that will create additional heat in the body. Chi level heat can be caused by Wei level heat. Chi level heat can result in Ying level heat and shui level heat. The treatment will be most effective if it is possible to differentiate where in the chi level the heat is. The heat can be located in one or more Zanfu organs, in which case there will be symptoms and signs that are specific to these organs. The treatment will then be focused on draining heat from these organs. Thank you very much for your attention.